Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn about variables in much more detail. So this whole section will be dedicated to understanding different types of variables and how we are going to practically use them into our API testing and proceed towards building a better automation script for API testing within Postman. Okay, so the first thing basically, if we talk about, so we have understood about that we are using Jira, right? So Jira Cloud, and we are working with Jira Cloud REST APIs, okay? So now, say for example, previously I have also showed that if in one of the project, uh, within Jira project, I want to create a particular issue, right? Be it your story or task or whatever, okay? Whatever issue types are supported. So for example, in a particular project, I want to create the issues. So I have to go through a sequence of certain APIs, right? So we have to get the project details or the idea of the project in which we want to create an issue, right? then we have to also see the mandatory fields that we have to assign so basically your api documentation will itself tell you about the mandatory attributes that are required in order to create something right so for example if my if i just jira search jira api documentation and here if we go to issue and we'll say uh, not this one sorry this is more of a this is jira cloud plot platform rest API. and in here we go to the issue and we say create issue right so if we go to the create issue which is a post call okay then you will see what all request fields are required basically right so in the request body what all things are required and here we will see go to the curl and you will see a sample curl with all the details right so this documentation doesn't show things or all the attributes very clearly as such here but then you can understand that from the UI as well, since we are just learning. So basically, if you just click on the UI here and say create issue, right? So we know that summary is mandatory here and then a report is mandatory. Okay. So you'll see that star. Okay. And then in order to create an issue, we have the other uh, mandatory field, which is reporter uh, and a summary. summary. And then we have to also select the type basically the issue type right so a couple of fields which we have already seen previously and that's when we came to this create issue call which is basically the call that we have used here right so basically in order to create an issue you have to hit that particular endpoint and then provide the payload right so this curl request you have to provide the data into the payload which is a json form and provide the mandatory details right so what all mandatory details we had provided in the request we'll simply go ahead and see those so you'll see we needed the project id right basically it is mandatory right so in which project you want to create the issue that is very important then we have to also assign who is reporting this right so basically the id of the reporter then what is the issue type uh, do you want to create story do you want to create tasks so that is another mandatory field and then summary okay so what just just a text basically what exactly this issue is all about so these were you know four mandatory fields that we identified now in your api testing your documentation will clearly so basically whosoever in the jira or would have tested within the atlassian about this create issue all these apis they would have got a different you know documentation as such uh, which with much more details so from solution designer from architects that how they are going to or what attributes are mandatory and what all they are going to test right so based on that they for example identified yeah these are the mandatory attributes and then some optional attribute they would have written the test cases accordingly now say for example here to create an issue we are hard coding the project id here we are hard coding the reporter id we are hard coding this issue type right and then along with this hard coding what we are also doing is we are basically in order to get the project id we are hitting the get projects call okay so we are hitting this get project call for example we just simply send it and expand this okay so now this get project call is giving me all the projects that are there in this particular jira instance that i am logged in okay so you will see this is demo service project and the id for that okay so accordingly there are different projects so in whichever project I want to create. So for example, I want to create a, an issue into the this project, okay, Zoho CRM sample project, okay. So I'll simply go ahead and copy this ID 1001, okay, and then paste it here in creating the issue. In, when, when I'm going to create the issue, I'll simply paste this ID here. Then I'll get all issue types that are supported into the project. Okay, that's the second request. So I'll send that request. 
and in the response you will see that I'll get different issue types. For example, the issue type ID 10013 is for task. Okay, and you will see this is all array and within the array will we are getting all different. It's a more of a uh, JSON format and then the ID and the task, the name of the issue type. So if say, for example, I want to create a story, so I'll get this ID. Okay, then I will go ahead and run the assignable users to get what to get the user to whom I can basically go ahead and assign or ID of the user who will be the reporter. Okay, and in summary, I can type in anything. So basically three calls before we can go ahead and create an issue successfully in Jira. So this is one very basic test case, right? So basically when you are going with the API testing, so not everything will be available on the UI, right? So you say for example, UI is still being built, but the APIs are ready. So when, when we say get project API is ready, okay? So we can basically create the project and then go ahead and test get project with different combination and different test uh, format and see that get project when we say get project by the filter by different attribute it is working fine or not. If that API is working fine then the integration of that API with the UI will obviously have very minimal issues right that's why we focus more on the API and that's what shift left is. So now we have got basically three calls to get all this information in order to go ahead and fill it here and this is what we are doing we are doing it manually okay now is there a better way absolutely there is a better way the better way is to store these this information that needs to be passed to the subsequent requests in api testing into the variables okay and there is a different scope of variables we have global we have collection right you have the environment uh, variables as well so we will understand how you can basically set the get these variables okay or basically set these variables through the script okay and store the data and then use it into the other request okay now say for example get projects okay we are in the get project now in the get projects we close everything else when i am when i'm going to create an issue i need to get the project id of the project where i want to create an issue okay so the project id where i want to create an issue is this zoho crm sample project the name of the project and this is the id how can i go ahead and store in a way in it a variable and then use it in a subsequent create issue call okay so what we need to do we need to simply go ahead and in the tests okay what we'll do is we will simply use pm okay and then we'll say dot collection right as soon as you will say pm is an object so postman and dot collection variable is a property right so when we say collection variable this variable will be created through the script and will be at the collection level okay when we say collection level it is basically the scope will be at this level right at the collection so let's quickly set it okay so what i'll do is i'll say pm dot collection variables dot set okay set dot set and then you will see that you have to provide the string the key what is the name of the variable right and then the value right so you have to fetch the value from where you have to fetch the value from the response somewhere in the response you will get the project id that you need to store in a variable so that you can use it you you can use that variable somewhere else in your script and you don't have to manually copy and paste right so what we are going to do we are going to simply say provide a string there okay so in the quotes double quote single quote doesn't matter we'll simply say the variable as project id okay the name as project id and the next attribute or the the argument will be what is the value that you want to store in this variable okay so how are we going to get that value we are going to get that value from where from the response right this value is there in the response okay and where exactly is this value so we'll simply go ahead and see that this value close it sorry say okay so you'll see that this particular value okay is in the values right so within the values you will see that the project id will be there okay right so let me quickly store uh, let me print that first on the screen i'll comment this out okay and in order to get or print the response the json response as a javascript object we have understood that we can do it by simply storing we'll say we'll declare a variable we'll say response okay and then we know that there's an object pm and then dot response and then dot json 
is the method that will basically what it will do it will get the complete response okay it will get the complete response from the response and store it as a it as a javascript object okay uh, now from there we will be able to traverse through okay so now say for example i'll simply print it okay so i'll say console.log and then say response okay by the way i have already explained all these things in the previous video so this is more of a refresher okay so if i print this and send this particular request you will see that we are getting this object and then below this we are having these different values so we have this is the array right so if you expand one of this you will see that we are getting the id project id name and everything here so at which location this project is it is at the fourth location right so in order to get the id of the fourth project that is there what we'll do right we will simply use the same trick that we use so basically we know that we are getting the response and then we have the response and below response we have the values right so we have this value so if you say response dot values okay simply if i want to print response dot value so it should basically print this array okay so if i clear this and send this again you will see now the all the values within that array are being printed nothing else right now within this array i want to go to the fourth one and fetch this id how we are going to do that we know that this fourth index or the value at the fourth index will be will be um, fetched by the index 3 because array index starts from 0 so the fourth value will be at the third index so what we'll say we'll say i want the value which is at the third index okay so if i'll send this now and in the console you'll see that we are getting only that particular project detail right and now we want to fetch the id of that project so what we'll do we'll simply say values dot and then the id right because this id is below this values right so we are getting the value and then below value straight away there is an id so we can fetch that value okay so we'll say dot id and then if i send this and see the console log you will see 1001 is stored here okay or printed in the console so in order to set this particular value as a variable okay so what we'll do i'll uncomment this so we have this pm dot collection variables dot set and then in project id what i want to set is the project id for the project which is at this index right so we'll simply copy this okay and then paste it here right so now what will happen is there will be a variable with the project id created at which level at the collection level so if i expand this here this is the collection jira api testing is the collection if i go to the variables you will see there is a project id at the moment let me delete it okay and save it all right so there is no project id at the moment right so now if i go to the get projects okay and the project id is project and i is capital and d is capital and then the value that will be fetched from the response will be stored against this particular variable so if i send this now okay and go to this collection here okay so which is then you will see the project id variable has been created through the script and the value has been set which is the value of the project where we want to create the issue okay so this is how you are going to fetch the values from the response and store it as a variable okay or store those values in the collection variable so that we can use them or reuse them in our further calls so now we know that this id is being stored in a variable project id now in order to create an issue okay in the request okay so in the request previously we were hard coding here okay so now what we can do we can simply fetch that variable right so we can to fetch any particular variable we can simply in the double quotes right in the double quotes we can just mention what we can mention the id or the variable name what is the variable name the variable name is project id right so we can simply put the project id there okay so we'll simply say project and id right so you'll see automatically fetch that okay so now if say for example i go ahead and send this particular request okay so let me save it so now if i simply go ahead and send this request okay so it should work exactly the same way right so you'll see that uh, issue got created with this particular key okay 
and now let me quickly clear the console and run it again okay so we'll simply see what exactly is the value that is being passed okay so we send that particular request and if we go here in the details in the request body you will see one triple zero one has been replaced as an id that has been passed okay so this is basically how we are going to use the variables from the script right so in order to use the variables from the script it is absolutely simple and easy we simply have to define them okay so let me open the sidebar again and we simply have to go and within the test we simply get the value okay by the tricks that we have learned previously and then store it in into the variable by using pm.collection variables.set now this is at the collection level so basically this variable will be accessible by any of the requests that are below this collection right below this 1.0 api testing any folder any request that is there below this will be able to access this particular variable value okay so assignment for you guys is basically go ahead and do the same exercise for the reporter for the issue type and replace those with the variables and then summary as well we'll put some random text there right or you can leave summary as is because summary is something which you can basically randomize or type by your own uh, but these values need to be fetched from uh, this get uh, issue type and then get users assignable so similar approach i'll quickly modify the script for the next video with all these variables and i'll store it at the collection level and then we'll proceed further with doing end-to-end -end automated testing by fetching all these variables okay so that's all for this particular video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching